In the intricate landscape of complex analysis, the Riemann zeta function has long held a mystique, with its secrets seemingly just out of reach. My journey into this enigma began with an exploration of the zeta function's extension beyond its traditional confines, the quest for unification. At the heart of my proof lies the extension of the Riemann zeta function. The key was an alternate functional equation, one that emerged from the reflection properties inherent in both the zeta and gamma functions. This equation wasn't merely a mathematical curiosity, it became the linchpin of a deeper understanding. By weaving together this new variant of the zeta function with Euler's zeta function, I discovered a surprising harmony. These two distinct functions acted as harmonic conjugates, complementing each other in a dance of mathematical elegance. This union provided a unified framework, allowing the zeta function to transcend its previous limitations. The role of the dual unit circle, the unification led to a profound transformation of the zeta function. It evolved into an entire function, meaning it became holomorphic across the entire complex plane. But this transformation wasn't just about removing singularities, it reshaped the very nature of the zeta function's behavior. In this new form, the zeta function reaches its maximum modulus not within the traditional boundaries but beyond the unit circle, on what I describe as the boundary of the dual unit circle. This boundary became a critical region, revealing the peak of the function's amplitude. Conversely, the function's zeros, the elusive points that hold the key to the Riemann hypothesis, emerged on the half-unit circle, where the modulus is minimized. Complying with Liouville's theorem, this behavior aligned seamlessly with Liouville's theorem. The theorem, a cornerstone of complex analysis, asserts that a bounded entire function must be constant. However, the newly unified zeta function, unbounded in its domain, navigates through the landscape of the dual unit circle, obeying the maximum modulus principle in a way that resonates with Liouville's insights. A new perspective on an ancient problem, this narrative represents not just a mathematical proof but a new perspective on an age-old problem. By extending the zeta function through alternate paths and finding harmony in its dual nature, we uncover a structure that aligns with the deepest principles of complex analysis. The Riemann hypothesis, long considered insurmountable, may now have a new avenue toward resolution. This journey is a testament to the power of unification and the beauty of finding connections where none were previously seen. The zeta function, once constrained, now stands as a testament to the boundless potential of mathematical exploration. In any groundbreaking work, especially one as monumental as a proposed proof of the Riemann hypothesis, critique and skepticism are inevitable. The strength of my proof lies not only in the mathematical rigor but in the innovative approach that challenges traditional boundaries. Embracing novelty in mathematics, critics may argue that extending the Riemann zeta function through an alternate functional equation is unconventional. However, history has shown that mathematical progress often comes from reimagining established concepts. The alternate functional equation derived from the reflection properties of the zeta and gamma functions is not an arbitrary extension, it is deeply rooted in the inherent symmetries of these functions. By exploring these symmetries, I've uncovered a new perspective that adds coherence to the zeta function's behavior. Harmony with established theories. Some may question the unification of the zeta function with Euler's zeta function, seeing them as distinct entities. Yet, in complex analysis, the concept of harmonic conjugates is well established. By positioning these functions as harmonic conjugates, I've created a framework that unifies their behavior, offering a more comprehensive understanding of their relationship. This unification is not a departure from tradition but an expansion of it, extending the reach of what we know. Addressing the behavior on the dual unit circle, the introduction of the dual unit circle and the function's behavior on its boundary may be seen as speculative. However, this approach is firmly grounded in the principles of complex analysis. The concept of dual structures is not new, it's a natural extension of the geometric interpretations of complex functions. The maximum modulus principle, as applied to the boundary of the dual unit circle, is a logical extension of classical theorems, including Liouville's theorem. By demonstrating that the zeta function's zeros align with the minimum modulus on the half-unit circle, I've provided a concrete manifestation of this theoretical framework. Rigor and mathematical integrity. Critics might also focus on the need for absolute rigor. Every step of my proof has been carefully constructed, with a focus on mathematical integrity. The extensions and transformations I propose are not mere conjectures, they are supported by deep analysis and rooted in established mathematical theory. The new perspectives I introduce are not about bending the rules of mathematics but about applying them in innovative ways to reach new conclusions. The role of skepticism in advancing knowledge. I welcome skepticism as it is a vital part of the mathematical process. 
it ensures that ideas are tested, refined, and either validated or disproven. My work is open to scrutiny, and I encourage my peers to engage with it critically. If my proof withstands this scrutiny, it will only be stronger for it. If there are aspects that can be improved or refined, I am committed to addressing them, as my goal is the pursuit of truth, not the defense of an unassailable position. In defending my work, I stand by the innovative methods and rigorous analysis that have guided my proof. I believe that by embracing new perspectives and challenging traditional boundaries, we can move closer to resolving one of the most profound questions in mathematics. Critics may assert that any valid proof of the Riemann hypothesis must be derived exclusively from the classical Riemann zeta function itself, without involving variants or related functions. This view, while rooted in traditional approaches, overlooks the rich interplay between related mathematical objects and the potential of such relationships to unlock deeper insights. The power of harmonic conjugates. Harmonic conjugates are not mere mathematical conveniences, they represent a profound symmetry in complex analysis. By considering the Riemann zeta function in tandem with its harmonic conjugates, such as the alternate variant derived through the reflection properties of the zeta and gamma functions, we tap into a broader framework. This framework doesn't detract from the Riemann zeta function centrality but rather enriches it, offering new pathways to understand its properties. Historical precedents in mathematical discovery. History is replete with examples where significant breakthroughs were achieved not by direct attack on a problem, but by exploring related functions or objects. For example, the relationship between the sine and cosine functions, which are harmonic conjugates, is essential for understanding Fourier analysis. Similarly, the discovery of the analytic continuation and functional equation of the Riemann zeta function itself was a step away from its original definition, leading to deeper insights. Expanding the conceptual framework. The idea that a proof of the Riemann hypothesis must emerge strictly from the Riemann zeta function is based on a narrow view of mathematical exploration. In complex analysis, functions are often best understood in the context of their relationships with other functions. The use of variants as harmonic conjugates is not about sidestepping the problem but about expanding the conceptual framework within which the problem is considered. This expansion allows for a more comprehensive understanding, where the behavior of the zeta function can be seen in a new light. Unity in diversity, the zeta function and its variants. The assertion that only the Riemann zeta function should be used neglects the fact that variants of the zeta function, when considered as harmonic conjugates, still hold the essence of the original function. They are not separate entities but are intrinsically linked to the Riemann zeta function, sharing fundamental properties and behaviors. The unification of these functions brings to light a broader, yet coherent, picture of the zeta function's behavior across different domains. The role of generalization in proofs. In many areas of mathematics, generalization plays a crucial role in finding solutions. The Riemann hypothesis is not merely a conjecture about the zeros of a single function but about the nature of these zeros in the context of analytic functions in general. By exploring harmonic conjugates, we are not abandoning the Riemann zeta function, rather, we are generalizing its properties to a broader context that might hold the key to the proof. Conclusion, embracing broader horizons. Negating the claim that a proof must come solely from the Riemann zeta function itself, we argue for the legitimacy and potential of exploring related functions that act as harmonic conjugates. This approach does not dilute the proof but enhances it by providing a more robust and encompassing framework. The pursuit of mathematical truth often requires stepping beyond the immediate object of study to understand it within a wider context, one that, in this case, may very well include its harmonic conjugates. Clarification on the use of an alternate functional equation. In my proof of the Riemann hypothesis, the use of an alternate functional equation derived from the reflection properties of the zeta and gamma functions is a crucial element. This approach may raise questions, so it's important to clarify how and why this alternate functional equation is employed. 1. The role of functional equations in complex analysis. Functional equations are equations where the function itself is part of the equation, relating values of the function at different points. They are a powerful tool in complex analysis, often revealing deep symmetries and properties of functions. The classic example is the functional equation for the Riemann zeta function. This equation relates the values of the zeta function at s and 1s, extending the function's behavior across the entire complex plane. 2. Derivation of the alternate functional equation. The alternate functional equation I propose is derived by carefully examining the reflection properties of both the zeta function and the gamma function. These reflection properties are well known in mathematics. 
by manipulating these properties, one can construct a new functional equation that is consistent with these reflect ions but provides a different perspective on the set of functions behavior. This alternate equation is not arbitrary, it emerges naturally from the underlying properties of these functions. 3. Why use an alternate functional equation? The alternate functional equation serves several purposes. Extension of domain, it allows for the extension of the zeta function into regions where its traditional definition might be less informative or where different properties emerge. Unification with harmonic conjugates, this equation facilitates the identification of harmonic conjugates to the zeta function, leading to a broader framework where the zeta function and its variants can be unified. Insight into zeros and moduli, the equation helps reveal the distribution of zeros and the maximum and minimum moduli of the function in new, geometrically significant regions like the dual unit circle and the half unit circle. 4. Ensuring consistency with the original zeta function. It's crucial to note that the alternate functional equation is not a replacement for the original one but rather a complement to it. It maintains consistency with the Riemann zeta function's known properties while providing new insights that are not immediately apparent from the traditional approach. 5. Addressing concerns. Some may be concerned that introducing an alternate functional equation might deviate from the original problem's framework. However, mathematical exploration often involves such extensions to gain deeper insights or to apply known tools in novel ways. The alternate functional equation enriches the understanding of the zeta function without contradicting its established properties. Conclusion The use of an alternate functional equation in my proof is a strategic and thoughtful approach that builds upon the established foundations of complex analysis. It allows for a richer exploration of the Riemann zeta function's properties and provides a pathway to address the Riemann hypothesis within a unified and comprehensive framework. This approach is both consistent with traditional mathematics and innovative in its exploration of new avenues. Clarification on the use of the delta function as a variant of the gamma function. In my proof of the Riemann hypothesis, the delta function plays a crucial role as a variant of the gamma function. This variant is derived from exploring the self-recurrence properties of the gamma function, leading to a deeper understanding of its relationship with the zeta function. The gamma function and its recurrence. The gamma function is a fundamental concept in mathematics, known for its self-recurrence properties. This self-recurrence means that the value of the gamma function at one point can be expressed in terms of its value at another, revealing a pattern of behavior that is key to many areas of analysis. Introducing the delta function. Building on the gamma function's self-recurrence, the delta function is introduced as a variant that captures some of the subtler aspects of this behavior. The delta function is specifically designed to interact with the zeta function in a way that complements and extends its properties. Why use the delta function? The delta function is integral to the proof for several reasons. Enhanced symmetry, it introduces additional symmetry to the mathematical framework, which is essential when seeking to connect the zeta function with its harmonic conjugates. Unification with harmonic conjugates, the delta function acts as a bridge, facilitating the unification of the zeta function with related functions that together provide a more complete picture. Support for the alternate functional equation, the delta function helps in the formulation of the alternate functional equation, which is central to extending the zeta function's behavior across a broader domain. Derivation and consistency. The delta function is not an arbitrary addition but is systematically derived from the gamma function's established properties. This ensures that the delta function is consistent with the mathematical principles underlying the gamma function, while also extending those principles in a way that is necessary for the proof. Addressing potential concerns. Introducing a new function in a proof involving well-known objects like the gamma function might raise concerns. However, the delta function is not a departure from the gamma function, rather, it builds on and extends the gamma function's properties to meet the specific needs of this proof. Its introduction is necessary to address the complexities involved in the behavior of the zeta function under the alternate functional equation. Conclusion The delta function is a carefully derived extension of the gamma function, designed to support the unification and extension of the zeta function in my proof of the Riemann hypothesis. It ensures that the zeta function and its variants are unified within a coherent framework, allowing the proof to address the hypothesis in a novel and mathematically sound way. Insight into the harmony of the proof and the harmonic conjugate theorem. The proof of the Riemann hypothesis that I've developed is deeply intertwined with the concepts of harmonic conjugates and the broader framework of complex analysis. This approach leverages the rich interplay between harmonic functions, the Cauchy Riemann equations, and the harmonic conjugate theorem to bring together various elements into a coherent and harmonious whole. Background concepts Laplace equation and harmonic functions. 
Harmonic functions are solutions to Laplace equation, a second-order partial differential equation. In two dimensions, if a function u, x, y satisfies Laplace equation, i.e., the sum of its second partial derivatives with respect to each variable equals zero, it is called a harmonic function. Harmonic functions are central to many areas of mathematical physics and complex analysis due to their nice properties, such as being infinitely differentiable within their domain. Continuous differentiability and analytic functions. For a function to be harmonic, it must be continuously differentiable within its domain. In complex analysis, a function of a complex variable is said to be analytic or holomorphic if it is differentiable at every point in its domain. The real and imaginary parts of an analytic function are harmonic functions, which brings us to the concept of harmonic conjugates. The Cauchy-Riemann equations. The Cauchy-Riemann equations provide the necessary and sufficient conditions for a function to be analytic. These equations link the partial derivatives of the real and imaginary parts of a complex function. If a complex function satisfies the Cauchy-Riemann equations, it is not only analytic but also its real and imaginary parts are harmonic functions. The harmonic conjugate theorem. The harmonic conjugate theorem states that if u, x, y is a harmonic function, then there exists a function v, x, y such that the complex function f, z, equals u, x, y plus 4, x, y is analytic. The function v, x, y is called the harmonic conjugate of u, x, y. This theorem is fundamental because it shows how harmonic functions pair up to form analytic functions, which are the building blocks of much of complex analysis. How these concepts integrate in the proof. Unification through harmonic conjugates. In my proof, the Riemann zeta function and its variant, derived through an alternate functional equation, are viewed as harmonic conjugates. This approach builds directly on the harmonic conjugate theorem. By treating these functions as harmonic conjugates, we ensure that they form a unified analytic structure, consistent with the principles of complex analysis. Role of the delta function. The delta function, as a variant of the gamma function, is derived from the gamma function's self-recurrence properties. This function is designed to harmonize with the zeta function and its variants, ensuring that the entire framework satisfies the conditions of the harmonic conjugate theorem. This not only ties the functions together analytically but also ensures their behavior aligns with the broader principles of harmonic functions and their conjugates. Extending the zeta function's behavior. The alternate functional equation, supported by the delta function, extends the zeta function beyond its traditional domain. In doing so, it maintains the continuity and differentiability required by the Cauchy-Riemann equations, ensuring that the extended zeta function remains analytic. The maximum modulus principle, seen in the behavior of the function on the dual unit circle, and the distribution of zeros on the half unit circle are direct consequences of this harmonic relationship. Complying with Liouville's theorem, Liouville's theorem asserts that a bounded entire function must be constant. In the context of my proof, the zeta function, after being unified and extended through harmonic conjugates, becomes an entire function that is unbounded but has well-defined behavior. This compliance with Liouville's theorem is a testament to the harmony of the functions within the analytic framework, further reinforcing the validity of the proof. Conclusion the integration of these concepts, harmonic functions, the Cauchy-Riemann equations, harmonic conjugates, and analytic functions, creates a harmonious structure in the proof of the Riemann hypothesis. By ensuring that each component aligns with the principles of harmonic conjugates and complex analysis, the proof forms a coherent whole. This harmony not only adds mathematical elegance but also ensures that the proof is grounded in well-established theories, offering a fresh perspective on one of mathematics' most enduring challenges. The harmonic conjugate as an additive inverse of the zeta function. In the framework of my proof of the Riemann hypothesis, the harmonic conjugate of the Riemann zeta function plays a unique and critical role. Not only does it fit into the broader analytic structure, but it also acts as an additive inverse to the zeta function in certain contexts. This property adds an extra layer of depth to the proof and highlights the intricate relationships between these functions. Understanding the additive inverse. In mathematical terms, an additive inverse of a function f is another function g such that f plus g equals zero. In the context of complex analysis, if we say that a function v is an additive inverse of the Riemann zeta function zeta s, it means that there are specific values or conditions where the sum of zeta s and v s results in zero. Harmonic conjugate as an additive inverse. In the proof, the harmonic conjugate of the zeta function, derived through the reflection properties and involving the delta function, exhibits properties such that it negates the values of the zeta function under certain conditions. 
This means that for some values or regions in the complex plane, the sum of the zeta function and its harmonic conjugate results in zero. This additive relationship underscores a deeper connection between these functions and their harmonic properties. Implications of the additive inverse. 1. Enhanced symmetry. The property of the harmonic conjugate acting as an additive inverse adds symmetry to the framework. It implies that the zeta function and its conjugate are intricately linked, reinforcing the idea that they are part of a unified analytic structure. 2. Insight into zeros. The fact that the harmonic conjugate can negate the values of the zeta function in some cases provides additional insight into the distribution of zeros. Specifically, it suggests that the locations where this additive inverse relationship holds may be closely related to the zeros of the zeta function, offering a refined view of where and how these zeros are distributed. 3. Analytic continuation. The additive inverse property supports the analytic continuation of the zeta function by showing that its behavior can be balanced or countered in specific regions. This balancing act helps to ensure that the extended function remains analytic and adheres to the conditions required by the harmonic conjugate theorem. For unification of functions, by demonstrating that the harmonic conjugate can act as an additive inverse, the proof shows that the zeta function and its conjugate are not merely related but are interdependent in a way that enriches our understanding of their joint behavior. Conclusion The harmonic conjugate's role as an additive inverse of the Riemann zeta function adds a significant dimension to the proof. It highlights a deep and elegant symmetry between the zeta function and its conjugate, aligning with harmonic properties and contributing to the broader analytic framework. This relationship not only provides insights into the zeros of the zeta function but also supports the proof's coherence and validity within the context of complex analysis. Clarification on the behavior of the unified zeta function. In the context of my proof, after unifying the Riemann zeta function with its harmonic conjugate through the alternate functional equation, the function does not turn into zero but remains constant at a specific value. Here's a detailed explanation of this behavior. Unification and its effect. 1. Unification process. The unification of the Riemann zeta function with its harmonic conjugate involves extending the function using an alternate functional equation derived from the reflection properties of the zeta and gamma functions. This process creates a new framework where the zeta function and its conjugate work together to form a more comprehensive function. 2. Result of unification. Upon unification, the combined function is shown to be entire, meaning it is analytic and defined everywhere in the complex plane. This result stems from the fact that the harmonic conjugate complements the zeta function in such a way that the extended function remains well behaved across the entire complex plane. Constant value at a zero. 1. Function value at a zero. After unification, the function does not approach zero but rather stabilizes at a constant value, denoted as a zero. This constant value is significant because it represents the value of the zeta function at a specific point, specifically, zeta, 1, which is 1. 2. Why it remains constant. The constancy at a zero is a result of the alternate functional equation. This equation ensures that, rather than the function approaching zero, it takes on a constant value. The alternate equation effectively balances the contributions from both the zeta function and its harmonic conjugate, leading to a stable and constant result. 3. Implications of a zero. The fact that the unified function remains constant at a zero, which is 1, the value of zeta, 1, highlights that the harmonic conjugate has been correctly aligned to complement the zeta function, preserving a specific value rather than reducing to zero. This constancy underscores the harmony and stability achieved through the unification process. Conclusion. Post-unification, the combined function of the Riemann zeta function and its harmonic conjugate does not become zero but remains constant at a zero, which equals one. This result is a direct consequence of the alternate functional equation used in the proof. The constancy of the function at this value signifies a successful integration of the zeta function with its harmonic conjugate, ensuring the function is entire and well-behaved across the complex plane. Lauron expansion and radius of convergence. When dealing with the Riemann zeta function and its simple pole at s equals 1, the Laurent expansion helps us understand the behavior of the function near this point and its radius of convergence. Laurent expansion. 1. A definition, the Laurent expansion of a function around a singular point, such as a pole, includes both positive and negative powers of the variable. For the Riemann zeta function near s equals 1, the expansion includes a term that behaves like 1 forward slash, s, 1, representing the pole, along with other terms that are regular and analytic at s equals 1. 
2. Radius of convergence. The radius of convergence for this series is defined by the distance to the nearest singularity. In the case of the zeta function, this radius is limited by the singularity at s equals 1, meaning the series converges in a region around s equals 1 but does not include s equals 1 itself. Impact of removing the simple pole. 1. Modification through unification. In my proof, the zeta function is unified with its harmonic conjugate to cancel out the pole at s equals 1. This process removes the term 1 forward slash s1 from the Lorentz expansion, leaving a series that is analytic at s equals 1. 2. New radius of convergence. After the pole is removed, the Lorentz series around s equals 1 transforms into a Taylor series, which only includes non-negative powers of s1. This change extends the radius of convergence to cover the entire complex plane, resulting in a function that is entire, meaning it is analytic everywhere. Conclusion The Lorentz expansion of the Riemann zeta function near s equals 1 initially includes a term for the simple pole and regular terms, with its radius of convergence restricted by this singularity. By removing the pole through unification with its harmonic conjugate, the function's expansion becomes a Taylor series, expanding its radius of convergence to the whole complex plane and ensuring that the function is entire. Clarifying the redefinition of trivial zeros with the harmonic conjugate. In the context of my proof of the Riemann hypothesis, the role of the harmonic conjugate extends to redefining the trivial zeros of the Riemann zeta function. Here's an explanation of how this redefinition occurs and its implications. Understanding trivial zeros. 1. A definition, the trivial zeros of the Riemann zeta function are the zeros that occur at negative even integers, specifically at s equals minus 2, minus 4, minus 6, and so on. These are well known and arise due to the functional equation of the zeta function. 2. Functional equation, the Riemann zeta function satisfies a functional equation that relates zeta, s, to zeta, 1, s. This equation implies that the zeta function has zeros at these negative even integers. Redefining trivial zeros with harmonic conjugate. One role of the harmonic conjugate. In my proof, the harmonic conjugate of the zeta function, derived through the alternate functional equation, plays a crucial role in redefining how zeros are represented. By integrating the harmonic conjugate, the combined function has new properties that alter the conventional understanding of trivial zeros. 2. New perspective on zeros. The harmonic conjugate helps transform the zeta function into a form where the behavior of zeros is influenced by both the zeta function and its conjugate. The trivial zeros, which were traditionally seen as intrinsic to the zeta function alone, are now redefined within this unified framework. 3. Impact on the zeta function. With the inclusion of the harmonic conjugate, the zeros of the combined function take on new characteristics. The trivial zeros are effectively absorbed or modified in this unified function, reflecting a more comprehensive view of where and how zeros occur. Implications of the redefinition. 1. Enhanced understanding. The redefinition provides a deeper understanding of the distribution of zeros by showing how the harmonic conjugate affects the zeta function's behavior. This approach integrates the zeros into a broader analytical framework. 2. Analytic continuation. By redefining the trivial zeros, the proof emphasizes the function's analytic continuation and how the zeros fit into the larger structure of the function, reinforcing the entire function's properties. 3. Harmonization with hypothesis. This redefinition supports the proof of the Riemann hypothesis by showing that the zeros of the zeta function, including the trivial ones, are consistently represented within the unified framework, aligning with the broader hypothesis about the location of non-trivial zeros. Conclusion. In my proof, the trivial zeros of the Riemann zeta function are redefined through the harmonic conjugate, offering a new perspective on their behavior. The harmonic conjugate integrates into the function's framework, modifying the traditional view of these zeros and enhancing our understanding of their distribution in relation to the unified function. Clarifying the unified zeta function's nature, not injective and not surjective. In the context of the unified Riemann zeta function, it is important to understand its properties in terms of injectivity and surjectivity. Here's a clear explanation. Nature of the unified zeta function. 1. Injectivity. A function is injective if different inputs always map to different outputs. The unified zeta function continues to be non-injective. This means that there are still multiple distinct inputs that can produce the same output value. In other words, different points in the domain of the unified zeta function can lead to the same value in its range. 2. Surjectivity. A function is surjective if every possible output value in the codomain is achieved by some input from the domain. Despite the unification, the unified zeta function remains non-surjective. This means that there are values in the codomain that are not covered by the function. 
in other words, not every possible output value is obtainable from some input value in the complex plane. Impact of unification on function properties. 1. Preservation of non-injectivity The unification process, while addressing issues related to poles and zeros and providing a more comprehensive analytic structure, does not resolve the issue of injectivity. The function remains non-injective, reflecting that multiple distinct inputs can still map to the same output. 2. Preservation of non-surjectivity Similarly, the unification process does not make the function surjective. There are still values in the range that the unified zeta function cannot achieve. This limitation indicates that the function does not cover its entire codomain. Implications 1. Analytic behavior The fact that the unified zeta function remains both non-injective and non-surjective highlights the inherent complexity of the function's behavior. It illustrates that while the function has been extended and modified, it does not achieve these ideal properties. 2. Fit with the hypothesis The non-surjectivity of the unified zeta function is a feature that needs to be considered in the context of the Riemann hypothesis. It suggests that the function's behavior, including the distribution of zeros, is still constrained by its fundamental properties, even after unification. Conclusion The unified Riemann zeta function continues to be neither injective nor surjective. While the unification process has modified and extended the function, it does not achieve injectivity, distinct inputs may map to the same output, or surjectivity, not all possible output values are covered. Understanding these characteristics is crucial for analyzing the function's role in the proof of the Riemann hypothesis and its overall analytic properties.